background is uh, English training. Anyway, for 12 years I've been teaching English across all the levels, across loads of loads of different um, ages, stages, levels, nationalities, and so on. And myself, I'm Polish anyway, so that was kind of uh, something new for, for me as well, to teach all the kind of different nationalities across. And this is where I kind of started my research, and this is where kind of I stepped onto kind of researching mobile learning, actually. Now, it all started kind of here in Ireland, and, um, and just to give you a bit of a context of my research, uh, I was working at that time in an Irish language school, medium-sized language school. We've, like, you know, uh, the, the scenario anyway, like, uh, we've been dealing with different visa students, non-visa students coming in for a different kind of period of time, one week, one month, six months, and so on. So this is what I was doing, but like, um, but then I had like different different students. Probably you recognize those faces anyway, uh, from all over the world, so like Asian, Latin Americans, Europeans, uh, coming over to study English anyway. Um, but I had a bit of a challenge, I would say, with my students. Uh, some of them were coming into Ireland, and they were actually coming to work, so they were not showing up for classes. Uh, some of them had really low motivation even to learn. And I think the most problematic one I had was kind of intermediate level, when they didn't really want to progress, or they were not progressing at all, because they were here for a while, the communication flow was, e was easy for them, so they could communicate, they had no drive to kind of to improve and move the level up in a way. So this was my challenge, so I was like, okay, how to make them work, how to make it happen? And this is where I stepped on my research in a way. Now, uh, those guys are next generation, right? There are loads of researchers around next generation, wherever you call them next generation or digital natives, X, Y, Z, um, millennials, centennials, and so on, we all know them anyway. Centennials is a new one, by the way. Um, that's, that's a new one. But we all know them, we all recognize them. We know their attention span is very short, we know they're used to using mobile technologies, and especially probably, like you've been dealing with, with, with those students as well from Asia who are really used to, who've got their phones stuck to their hands in a way, and they come in and they have to bring it in because it's kind of, it's a no-brainer for them, like it, they have to have it in a way. So this is what I was kind of, I stepped onto, and I was just thinking about building full digital citizenship around language um, itself. So this is what kind of started, to, I started to wonder in a way, and I was kind of uh, thinking, what should I do? Can I do something about it in a way? And then I started kind of reading loads, and I started my research um, on mobile devices and BYOD, BYOC. <coughs> Has anybody seen these before? BYOB is a common one in Dublin, I know this is bring your own bottle anyway, so that's one of those anyway. Now BYOT is bring your own device, bring your own uh, technology. Now it's very common as well, bring your own anyway, because like, like we have multiple devices, so it's not about one device, it's about anything. A tablet can be a mobile device, a phone can be a mobile device, even a laptop kind of a mobile device in a way. So bring your own was the thing. That was a hype a few years ago. Like. Um, uh, every year there's kind of um, uh, there's a Horizon report published. I don't know if you know about Horizon reports. It's good to look it up. Anyway, they publish uh, what's there for education based on technological advancement. And a few years ago, BYOD was a huge thing anyway. So I was just wondering, wondering how can I apply it to actually to English language training and so on. Now, BYOD, the trend started within the organization. So loads of employees were coming in with their mobile phones to work and they started working off their devices as opposed to uh, the laptops provided uh, by the organizations. So the organizations thought, yeah, well, let's cut the cost of maintenance of the laptops we provide to the employees. Let's give um, the employees a chance to use their own devices. No cost, low cost, great fun. So this is what they started doing, and it worked anyway. So then it started to move into educational organizations. Of course, it started in Australia, moving to the States, and then spreading across from the US and coming over to, uh, to Europe. Uh, Nikki Hockley um, wrote like, a nice uh, bit on uh, BYOD and, and she was discussing the educational considerations because there are many challenges with BYOD and mobile devices and mobile learning. Of course, as you can imagine, like uh, uh, students bring uh, their devices, uh, where would they charge them? So that's the consideration. Will we have charging stations within the classrooms? How we should reorganize the physical spaces even of the classroom? That was a huge challenge anyway. So these challenges are open and still they're kind of open for discussion and still there isn't like one answer how to approach BYOD. Now, huge challenge of course was um, policies within schools. Uh, here in Ireland I was dealing with uh, adults. Great, I didn't have to have all the policies. But you can imagine bringing 
um, own devices into a primary school, state school, for example. Like, dealing with minors is completely something different anyway, so there are so many considerations to think of, uh, which I kind of didn't have to deal because I was just dealing with um, adults, but I kind of, I researched those and I knew about those challenges, which I think we have to keep at the back of our minds. Now, one of the things when I started kind of you know, uh, dealing with, um, I'm just going to skip this for a second, uh, I was just looking at different models of BYOD actually, and I was just thinking, how should I approach BYOD and my students? Um, Alberta Education, those guys uh, did lots of research in BYOD, and they were saying, like, basically, we, uh, there's a range of introducing BYOD and mobile devices into the organization. So they said we can go from extremes, allowing students to bring whatever they want, so like whatever device, uh, Apple products, uh, Android-based devices, um, which gives loads of flexibility, uh, but on the other hand, there's no standardization. So these guys were talking about like how we should approach BYD. Should we allow students to bring whatever, or maybe if we should tell them to just bring tablets, Android-based, 10 inches, Samsung. We have huge consideration anyway. Now, I kind of uh, experimented, and I was just like reading loads and loads, and I went for full flexibility. So I was like, okay, my students come from different parts of the world. They have different devices. In Korea, Samsung is the thing anyway, yeah? Like, uh, so that was the thing anyway. In uh, Brazil, like, they had all kinds of devices. In Europe, mm, iOS probably was, was the ruling one. So then I started reading, and I was kind of started to apply it uh, to English training. Um, of course, there's lots of research on call, tell, and mall. These are not verbs, by the way, and not <laughs> noun, so just to let you know, if, if you recollect them. Uh, call is computer-assisted language learning, and that was back in the 80s, yeah? Like when computers were brought into the classrooms, large computers, uh, desktops, uh, computer classrooms, still we have them in the language schools, don't we? Yeah? Still, there are views in a way, but that was back from the 80s. Then there was tell. Anybody? Tell? Technology, enhanced language learning, yeah? Technology, so the projector, yeah, coming to the classroom all of a sudden, maybe different devices, but the projector was the thing anyway, projecting somewhere on the wall, and finally more. Anybody? Mobile, yes, the second word. <laughs> Assisted language learning, LL is the easiest anyway. Yeah. So mobile assisted language le learning is um, something kind of recently new anyway because like access to mobile devices is reasonably new in a way. So basically uh, this started in Canada um, a few years ago and, and they started the research anyway. They started to build the networks around it and so on. But that led me kind of, that gave me the underlying basis to my research in BYOD. Now, uh, what did I do? So that's the context anyway. So I read all about this. I had those students, intermediate students. I was thinking about those guys. And then I kind of, um, I changed my role within the organization. So I had to kind of think how I can apply my research uh, when not being the researcher itself, kind of not being physically there in the classroom. Now, so after the ethics approval, of course, and after like making my three teachers do it, but not making, sorry, no, they volunteered nicely anyway. Uh, I picked three teachers. Uh, now, one of the teachers was a technophobe, completely not dealing with technology, but this is what I wanted in a way. I wanted to see whether that would work even with a teacher who doesn't have a clue about technology, mm -hmm. which was great. Then I had a, a very young teacher who was uh, a digital native in a way. Uh, she didn't have, like, she hasn't introduced that technology and hasn't enhanced her teaching with technology, but she was there in a way, like, and she was great to have. And then I have a techno geek, so a person who was uh, an engineer who loved those kind of things, devices and so on, which was great for me as well to try to see how it will work with somebody who knows their stuff in a way. So, like, I was working with three teachers. Now, I kind of instructed them. We had a meeting, as I said, voluntarily, kind of. Um, I instructed them, I told them what it's all about, how we're going to do it, and then I sat down to the syllabus adjustment. And I think it's fair to say that we should not be ever driven by technology itself. Everything should be grounded in pedagogy, I think. And that's the best approach. If you start with technology, your learning outcomes will be fractured in the end anyway, because you're driven by technology. Always start with the syllabus, always start with the learning outcomes, and then map technology to the learning out outcomes. And then, of course, working on the lesson plans. So this is what I've done. Like, kind of, I went with this path. And then, um, uh, like, when I planned the lesson plans, I planned it with DNA. And that's the device neutral applications approach. So basically, I said, uh, do you remember I was talking about flexibility, yeah? allowing the students to bring whatever into the classroom. 
So I said to the teachers, okay, they have to, uh, they can't make the students download an application. They have to be neutral in a way. They have to say, oh, we're using a tool for video making, yeah, to produce a video, and that was it, okay? Now, uh, the next approach, what I did, so I created the lesson plans, uploaded them to Google Drive, shared that with the teachers, briefed them on the lesson, uh, then they were teaching the lesson, and then uh, they were giving me feedback. So actually, the teachers kept a teacher's log kind of after every single uh, lesson uh, with technology, and they were kind of writing down their reflections on whatever happened and then feeding back to me. But of course, it was then it started up with analysis and coding, homeos, and anyways, <laughs> and everything. So that was the teacher's participation. Uh, that worked uh, really fine, but I was really interested to see how the teachers would kind of react to it, especially three different kinds of teachers in a way. But then I had students as well, uh, and I had the intermediate group. And now the problem was that, not the problem, it was a rolling enrollment. So basically what happened is that I had different students at the very beginning, and different students finished with me in a way. Uh, but what I did with them, I did a questionnaire and the focus group, which I transcribed and then analyzed in the end. But now the findings, uh, which was very, very interesting. Now, um, the students really, really appreciated uh, Bring Your Own Technology. Now, but of course, unfortunately, there was a downfall of, of technology. DNA approach was not very effective, to be honest with you, uh, in the end. So basically, uh, especially from the teacher's perspective, teachers didn't want to give very neutral in, like instructions because they felt like using, losing a bit of authority in the classroom. And that was very interesting to see. So we came up with the conclusions. There's no one size fits all model in a way. Like uh, it was very interesting to, to kind of see it in a way. Like students didn't mind, but teachers did mind. So I think one of the considerations whenever you are thinking yeah. about um, mobile devices, uh, take into this into consideration. Now, basically, and then we had technical issues, not to mention charging issues. Yeah, how to charge my mobile phone? I've got no battery. Yeah, the classrooms were still traditional classrooms. The classrooms were not adjusted, were still not prepared for this kind of you know, leap into the mobile devices. Uh, we have problems with Wi-Fi. Students have 3G, but now you know the places in Dublin, we have thick walls, old buildings. Wi-Fi was not existent, so the infrastructure wasn't there. So that's one of the considerations. And basically, what uh, like I didn't have to do loads with the policies, but one consideration when working on uh, with Andre, like with Myers, which I just mentioned, would be the policies as well involved. What kind of pictures to take? How to take them? If video, uh, we were talking about videos today. How to do it? Uh, what's going to be the overarching policy of the institution? Um, so I think those are the considerations for the future. So I think it's great, students really appreciate, appreciated that. And I think at one point, like, um, they build up their personal learning network, I'd say. They build this kind of online community. They increase their um, general digital literacy. But still, remember about those considerations when planning for mobile devices in the classrooms. Uh, my contact details, talk to me during the break. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you.